Hi, I'm Dakota. It's not hard to guess that I'm not really the kind of girl that always dreamed of becoming a princess as a kid, but now I want to tell you how my life kind of turned into a fairy tale by mistake. I got very lucky with my parents. They were always on the same page as me and wanted to let me do everything I wanted, like getting tattoos or even playing the guitar. And when my friends and I made a rock band, dad even equipped our garage for rehearsals. Hit it, guys! We are your biggest fans! Yeah, long story short, my family was unusual, but pretty cool, right? Except studying at music college was not very fun. I could barely stay awake during the dull lectures. Why would rock stars need all the stupid books? That kind of stuff was for nerds like the cellist Lisa. She was my bitter rival and also the teacher's pet. One day, I heard the head of the college announce over the loudspeaker that we'd be taking part in an exchange program for musically gifted students. Everyone who wanted to apply was supposed to pass some kind of test. At first, my friends and I just laughed. Who would want to work hard for some stupid exchange program? But a second later, I changed my mind. The winner will get the opportunity to learn from the great maestro, Mr. Holiday. I jumped up and squealed with delight. Holiday? From the rock band Maestro? He was my idol! My room was covered in that band's posters. Aw, oh, yeah, baby, I'm in! The problem was that Lisa was always one step ahead of me in her studies. So I decided that it was maybe time for some desperate measures. So I snuck into the locker room and I destroyed Lisa's cello before the concert that was supposed to decide our fates. I wasn't really that proud of it, but you know, there wasn't much I wouldn't do to meet my idol. And so I was chosen as the exchange student from our college. And I found out that Mr. Holiday lived in a small country that I had never even heard of. It didn't seem like the right place for such a famous musician, but I still packed my things and my guitar with enthusiasm. On the way to the airport, my parents and I were cheerfully singing along to the radio as usual, and everything was going fine. Seeing the exchange student who would live in our house while I was gone, my parents and I exchanged glances and tried to hold back our laughter. The guy seemed like, oh, such a weirdo. <laughs> He was dressed like he came from the previous century. And when he kissed mom's hand and tipped his hat to my dad, I doubled over with laughter. I left him for my parents to re-educate and I got on the plane. At the county airport, I was met by a personal limo driver and I felt like such a real rock star. If only I knew where they would be bringing me. Instead of the gorgeous mansion of a star like I'd been hoping to see, the driver dropped me off at the high gates of an estate resembling some ancient castle. I was met by very weirdly dressed people at the front door. An old man in a funny jacket, a guy who kind of resembled a Disney prince, and a maid who looked like she just stepped out of a historical novel. Jeez, what kind of weirdos are these people? But uh, the good news was that, judging by their faces, my appearance had shot them right back. Ugh. So, who are you anyway? I'm supposed to live with the musician, uh, Mr. Holiday. I think the driver uh, had to have made a mistake here. No, there is no mistake, young miss. I am Maestro Holiday, and I will be your teacher. Uh, imagine my disappointment. It turned out that the whole time they hadn't been talking about the musician from the Maestro band, but his namesake, a decrepit old man who is considered to be a famous pianist, a guy called Peter, whose brother had moved to my house as part of the exchange program, took me to my new room. I almost fainted when I saw the pink walls and the four poster bed. Meanwhile, Peter gallantly made some sort of welcome speech and then slobbered all over my hand. <laughs> then a maid walked into my room with a ridiculous dress and said that I would have to wear that from now on. You will adhere to the strict rules of this house. First of all, ladies will wear dresses. Secondly, forget about all modern devices. Here, we live the old fashioned way. And most Ooh. importantly, do not touch Mr. Holiday's old piano. He protects it assiduously. I ground my teeth. After all, <gasps> instead of meeting my idol, I got stuck in this <laughs> crazy fairy tale castle for a whole month. But <laughs> I don't think they knew who they were messing with yet either. No famous maestro could make Dakota Smith wear dresses. I opened the window and I threw the dress out as far as I could. It fell into a decorative pond and it sank. Then I went for dinner, except the old mean man frowned and said sternly that I wasn't allowed to sit at the table looking like that. Ugh. 
show respect for the rules of this house. So I went back to my room, angry. I'd really rather go to sleep hungry than wear dresses. There was a timid knock on my door, though. And it was Peter. He mysteriously lowered his eyes and advised me in a whisper not to leave the room at night and nothing bad would happen. I grinned again. Another strange rule? Oh, what? Don't tell me there are also ghosts in this ancient castle. Peter left without giving me an answer, though. As night fell, my empty stomach began to growl so loudly that I decided to sneak into the kitchen and find something delicious to eat. No made-up ghosts could scare me. In the hallway, my attention was drawn to the huge portrait of two men sitting at a piano. I recognized one as Mr. Holiday in his youth, and the other was, uh, I don't know, probably his brother? Both had brooches of precious stones with a family crest on them. I took an armful of pastries from the kitchen and was going back to my bedroom when I saw a shadow creeping by the stairs. I jumped out of fear. Were there actually ghosts haunting this place? The next morning, though, I told Peter and the maid what I'd seen, but they just shrugged nonchalantly. That's what I tried to warn you about, Dakota. The ghost has been causing havoc in the castle for a long time. It wanders around the hallways at night, breaking things and making a mess like it's looking for something. Don't be afraid, though. Just don't leave the room and you'll be fine. I couldn't resist twirling my finger at my temple, though. They sounded insane. Coming there had originally been a complete mistake, so I decided that I would just leave and go home. However, as I was about to pack my things, I ran into the owner of the castle in the hallway. Mr. Holiday apologized for leaving me without dinner and reminded me that I was there because of my love for music. You've been chosen from a hundred young talents, so let's forget about our differences and get on with the practice. The dream of performing on a big stage was really important for me, and Mr. Holiday was, after all, a famous musician, so I decided that Maybe I would be better off not missing this opportunity, and came to the lesson with my painted guitar at the ready. <laughs> Imagine my surprise when I only saw notebooks and textbooks in his office. I thought we were gonna study music, but you weren't letting me get anywhere near the piano. Being able to extract sounds from an instrument is not everything. First, you need to learn music history and musical notation. That's when I lost my temper. I'd had enough of boring lectures like I'd been getting at college. You don't understand anything. Music should come from the heart, not from some textbook. I slammed the door shut and I locked myself in my room. I felt like I would go insane if I didn't talk to someone who at least somewhat understood me. So I turned on my phone that I wasn't supposed to use, and I tried to call my parents. Strangely enough, though, none of them answered. That's why I ended up contacting my friends from the rock band, and I arranged a rehearsal via video. I kind of expected my guitar riffs to shake up the castle, so I wasn't that surprised when Peter walked into my room stunned. I thought he would start lecturing me in some boring voice, but instead he actually stared at the phone screen. My friends from the band were waving at him. So they're alive and they can see us in real time? I knew that technology was amazing, but this is truly a miracle. That's when I kind of started feeling bad for the guy. His grandfather had raised him as some old fashioned aristocrat and had never let him use the internet before. I felt like it was my duty to show Peter a life outside the castle. So I spent a lot of time telling him about supermarkets and cool blockbusters, showing him social networks, all the best websites and the limitless possibilities of the internet. I only realized what I had done the next day when guests came to the estate for a tea party. Mr. Holiday took a key from his neck and opened the lock on the piano. He was pretty visibly nervous because Peter was supposed to have come and play for the guests a long time ago. And he, he did come, but I think I was probably the only one happy to see him. There was no trace left of his Disney Prince look. Peter was wearing modern clothes, filming everything on his phone, and live streaming it to his new blog. Peter came up to his grandfather's piano and put a portable speaker on it. Modern basses thundered across the hall. Relax, Grandpa. I laughed, but Mr. Holiday got very angry and grounded Peter. I couldn't stand for this mistreatment any longer, though. You are such a tyrant. He hasn't done anything wrong. I was waving my hand so much that the tea I was holding spilled onto his precious piano and silence fell over the hall because everyone knew how reverently the maestro protected his instrument. He quickly realized that I had been the one to drag Peter into the world of modern gadgets, and so he took away my phone as punishment too. 
but uh, that was kind of going too far. I mean, what was I, a prisoner? That night, I snuck out of my room again to find my phone and get it back. But that's when a mysterious shadow snuck through the empty corridor. The ghost crept to the chest of drawers and quickly began rummaging through it. I got kind of suspicious. Instead of running away like last time, I turned on the lights and saw that it wasn't a ghost, but some dude. I opened my mouth to shout that there was a burglar in the house, but the man looked at me pleadingly and swore he would explain everything if I didn't yell. Look, please, miss, I'm not a burglar. I'm sorry I scared you. My name is Oliver. I'm my little holiday's brother. I squinted at the portrait and... Yeah, they did look a lot alike, so I guess the man was telling the truth. He said that Mr. Holiday had always been the favorite son because of his talents, so his parents had left all of the inheritance to him. Oliver had been kicked out of the house and had lived in poverty for a long time. But even that? Well, it hadn't been enough for Mr. Holiday. He had taken the only thing his brother had left, his precious brooch with the family crest. All I've ever wanted is to get it back. I've been sneaking around here at night for months, but I still haven't figured out where he's hiding it. I got so angry. Mr. Holiday turned out to not only be a pompous tyrant, but also a man greedy enough to let his brother live in poverty. I wanted to help Oliver, and I already had an idea as to where the heirloom could be. There had to be a reason why the old man was so obsessed with his piano. So I snuck into Mr. Holiday's room and I carefully took the key from around his neck. At one point, I kind of thought he was about to wake up, but the old man just snored harder and turned over to his other side. Oliver and I opened the piano and easily found a small package with the brooch under the lid. Oliver greedily snatched it out of my hands, and at that very moment, I heard heavy breathing behind me. Oliver? Dakota? What's going on here? Justice is being restored! Mr. Holiday clutched at his heart and said that he had never thought of leaving his brother in poverty. Their parents had once divided the inheritance equally among the brothers. It was just that Oliver had quickly chosen to waste the money, while Mr. Holiday got the family castle. He had hidden the brooch from his brother to preserve memories of their childhood. After all, Oliver would have almost certainly sold the heirloom. We used to both be budding pianists. But while I worked hard and kept improving, Oliver started going to parties and only relied on his talent. As a result, he was left with nothing and I became world famous. Oliver scoffed and said that he had just come to take what really belonged to him. And he left at the castle. Mr. Holiday turned pale and his eyes rolled all the way into the back of his head. And then he collapsed to the floor. I got so scared, I shouted for Peter. We got his grandfather to bed and the maid called for a doctor. I felt kind of guilty. I hadn't gotten all the facts, and so I acted dumb. I was also afraid that someday I would become just like Oliver. If I kept only relying on my talent, in the end, my skills would stop improving. I'd hit a wall. There would definitely be no hope of success for me then. So Peter and I began to take care of Mr. Holiday, and as soon as he got better, I asked him to give me some actual lessons. And he gladly did. At the farewell tea party, we even played together. Classical music with a contemporary arrangement. Before I left, Mr. Holiday admitted that my visit had taught him a few things too. New didn't necessarily mean bad. I will let my grandchildren choose what they want to be. I did enjoy my little adventure, but I also missed my parents pretty terribly. However, they looked very unusual when they came to get me. Young lady, you must be tired from the road. May I offer you a cup of tea? Peter's brother bowed and got into the taxi. <laughs> and I hugged my parents and laughed. You guys have had a hell of a month, haven't you? There was only one problem left. Lisa, I'm sorry that I destroyed your instrument. It's pretty obvious that you're the best student in our class. I'm sort of glad everything Ooh. turned out that way. <laughs> After all, the exchange student became a very good friend of mine. If I'd gone to the country, I don't think we would have met. That trip taught me a lot. And thanks to it, I fell even more in love with music. I've also decided that maybe I should stop judging people so harshly. We're all kind of weirdos in our own way. So tell us in the comments down below, what kind of strange people have you met?